Hi there. I'm excited to join Take Back Your Power Weekend and the Andrew Goodman Foundation to talk about how you can vote safely this November. My name is Amber McReynolds, and I am the CEO of the National Vote at Home Institute and Coalition. Formerly, I was the Director of Elections for the City and County of Denver, Colorado, and served as an elections official for 13 years. And during my time as director, we actually went through a transformation in Colorado where we updated our voting laws to be to put voters first and put you at the front of the process. And that included same day registration, automatic registration, delivering a ballot to you before every election, preserving in-person voting options at what we call vote centers, and also risk limiting audits. That model has made Colorado one of the top states to vote in and one of the most secure. And so I have been working for the last few years now in my new role at the National Vote at Home Institute and with our incredible team of not only former elections officials, but also experts to expand this type of voting and these options across the country. We've been working very hard to pass laws that are more voter friendly and put voters first. And we've been working, especially this year, during this extraordinary time in a pandemic to make sure that states are ready to handle a higher volume of voters casting their ballots by mail, but also ensure that their election systems are resilient and people can actually still vote during this public health crisis that we're all experiencing on a daily basis. We continue to work across the country with election officials and state officials to make sure our system is ready to serve you as the voters and in every state across the US. This is not an easy task. Elections are generally underfunded and tend to be under-resourced. And so in addition to dealing with the pandemic and all that comes with that, there's also budget cuts happening and election offices don't have everything they need to run this election. So we're really trying to support election offices and elections officials across the country so that they can serve you in a meaningful way. Now there's a few different ways that you can vote this year. The first category is voting at home. And I, I like to talk about this one because it includes a lots, lots of different variables. It includes absentee voting. It includes vote by mail, as some states call it. Some states talk about mail-in ballots. So there's lots of different terminology. But what it essentially means is that you are getting a ballot delivered to you that you can fill out and you can vote at home in your own time. And then one that you can return either through the post office or by dropping it off at a drop box, at a drive up drop off, at your polling place, at a vote center. You have multiple ways to send that ballot or get that ballot back in. Then the second method of voting that's available in every state is in-person voting. And there's a couple of different categories of that. First, you can vote on election day. Uh, this has been a way that many Americans have chosen to vote previously. And that means you're going to go to likely an assigned polling location uh, or possibly a vote center and cast your ballot on election day. You can also vote early in person in many states. And that means that you can visit any early voting location ahead of election day and cast your ballot. And that also means you can avoid some of the long lines that might occur on election day when everyone waits till the last minute. So those are some of the options. The last piece that I wanna cover is the importance of voter registration and making sure that your address is up to date now, today, tonight. Do it in advance. Don't wait till the last minute. Make sure you're registered to vote. Make sure that your address is up to date and make a plan to vote. So if you want to vote by mail, you should sign up as soon as you can. That helps your ballot get delivered to you in a timely manner, and it helps elections officials deal with the influx of volume that they're going to see this year. And finally, I want to talk about the other ways that you can engage. First and foremost, you can engage with nonprofits like ours or any of the nonprofits that are doing voting and civic engagement work in a nonpartisan way. Another way that you can engage is to serve as a poll worker. So elections officials also need uh, additional poll workers this year to serve the public. 
And it's tricky because the average age of poll workers has been between 60 and 70 in most states. And the reality is we need more people this year and elections officials have that need across the United States. So it's a great way for you to get involved. Now, speaking of taking your time, you'll wanna check your voter registration and request your mail ballot as soon as possible. Please, I beg you, I've said it twice. It's that important. You need to do it as soon as possible. Check it today, check it tonight. Encourage your friends to check it and sign up for a mail ballot. You might have also seen in the primaries that some voters haven't gotten ballots. And part of the reason for that is because the volume happens so late that it's hard to get all the ballots out. So if you request in advance and request soon, some of that can go away. So let's do our part, make sure everyone has access to vote and make sure that we get it done in a safe and secure way and encourage each other to vote and encourage each other to turn your ballot in. Be proud to vote. Get excited about voting. That's what we all want. It's our democracy. We can, we can honor all those that fought for our voting rights and our voting access before us, and we can start a mo new movement to have the highest turnout on record and have the highest engagement of our citizens in a diverse and inclusive way. So thank you for letting me be here, and I'm just really excited to share this moment in time with all of you and make sure that our democracy is strong and that voters have access and that we put voters first more than anything. We need to put voters first. Thank you so much and take care.